Well, welcome everybody. I'm really excited to uh, have you all here today. And I'm really excited to have uh, Sanjay Dewan from uh, Sirens with me today. You know, we talk about voice assistants every day at voicebot.ai. It's a constant discussion. And a lot of people are talking about smart speakers because that's been the new kid on the block for a while, very interesting. We hear about voice search on the phone and more and more we're talking about voice in the car. And I think of those as the big three, the phone, the car, and the smart speaker are really the ones that are driving adoption of voice assistance uh, more broadly you know, throughout the day-to-day -day habits of consumer lives. And so we have the report that we put out a couple months ago. It's our second year in a row that we've done that, really focusing on the use cases in the car, how people are adopting them. So I do encourage you to download that and follow along, voicebot.ai forward slash research. You'll be able to find it there. If you're, you're listening to this afterwards and you're doing it, the hands-free, eyes-free version of this, we're going to talk about it. We'll refer to the numbers. You don't absolutely have to have it if you don't need to, but we want to make sure that everyone has access to that if they'd like. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is introduce my guest, uh, Sanjay Dewan. Thanks, Sanjay. I really appreciate it uh, that you're able to make it today. As I wrote in October when, when uh, Syrinx spun out from Nuance was that a voice giant was born. Uh, and Syrinx has voice assistant technology over 300 million vehicles. Maybe, Sanjay, you could tell people a little bit more about the origin of Syrinx, how you came to market, and what you're focused on right now. Sure. Uh, thank you, uh... Thank you, Brett. Uh, firstly, to all the uh, people joining uh, on the call, uh, a warm welcome uh, to all of you. But uh, more importantly, hope uh, you and your families are doing well. I think we're going through a crazy time in uh, in the world right now, and uh, you know it's uh, you know nice to be kind of you know talking about something else than uh, coronavirus today, Brett. So thank you for inviting me. Um, the uh, company Serens was formed on October 1st uh, last year. So we're, we're uh, in our sixth month as a, as a new company. We're a publicly listed company uh, listed on NASDAQ uh, from day one, from October 1st. Uh, we were one of, the th one of the three divisions of Nuance. Uh, Nuance traditionally focused uh, uh, on healthcare enterprise and, and auto. And the auto division was spun out into an independent company called Serence. And I took over as a, uh, as a, uh, a CEO of the company starting October 1st. Uh, I would uh, classify us as a uh, uh, publicly listed startup. So, so we have a, a, a you know, clear kind of you know, culture of innovation, uh, uh, very focused on, on, on our customers and uh, very focused on kind of you know bringing uh, you know voice platforms and other multimodal multimodality interactions in the in the car uh, and like you said you know almost 325 million installed base and growing mm -hmm. and um, you know the company uh, uh, people can get more details about our company from sedens.com yeah absolutely i i think thank you so much for that introduction i I think a lot of people are familiar with Nuance Automotive, maybe not as familiar with the, the recent story about the separation between the two companies. And so that's really good uh, background. You know, I said at the beginning that we're not necessarily going to talk about coronavirus. You know, everybody's that's top of mind for everyone. So I think it would actually be kind of helpful right now uh, for us just to just to address that because it is top of mind. Sirens is a company that is obviously a global tech company, so you have your your own day-to-day -day operations to con be concerned about, but you're also tied into the automotive industry, which is going through its own challenges around coronavirus right now. What are you doing as a company? How are you managing that as a CEO of a publicly traded company? Sure. So, you know, I have uh, basically... Um... Uh, broken the uh, the focus of our leadership team into five key areas. Uh, number one is uh, employee health and and safety, um, and I've asked my HR head to completely focus on that. Um, I have uh, 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 
uh, asked my CIO to focus on business continuity. So that's number two, which is, you know, we have uh, basically implemented remote operations, just like, you know, most of the other companies. And we want to make sure that our, our, our employees are productive. Uh, the IT systems are scaling to kind of, you know, provide them the support. So uh, business continuity is focused by our uh, uh, CIO. The third thing is, you know, I'm, uh, I've asked my CFO to do very detailed contingency financial planning. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we do expect, uh, you know, certain impact to our, you know, business because we are somewhat tied to new car shipment. So, um, you know, with the uh, OEM shutting down factories and so on and so forth, you know, there will be some, uh, some impact and we're trying to assess what that impact is going to be and make sure from a financial planning standpoint, you know, we're strong and our balance sheet, you know, remains strong and we can come out of it strongly. We're also, you know, uh, I've asked my CFO to focus on investor planning. You know, obviously investors are going through huge gyrations, as you can see in the stock market change, you know, fluctuations and so on and so forth. And, you know, we want to make sure our, um, you know, we keep our lines open with our investors, you know, who are the co-owners in our company. And lastly, not, uh, this is by the way, not in any priority order. Uh, the last one is, you know, customers. So uh, we're very focused on making sure that uh, our customer programs and our customer commitments and deliverables remain on track because, you know, many of the programs that we are working, working on, you know, ship in, you know, two, three years out. So, so you don't want to kind of, you know, create a scenario where there's a ripple effect caused by uh, the virus uh, uh, shutdowns uh, that we are experiencing right now. So these are the five areas that, that, that we are focused on, Brett. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. I think there's a lot of people are walking through their approach right now. Some have created something new. Others are implementing some modification of what they've implemented for hurricanes or other types of of events, but it's really great for you to just take a moment to share you know, how you're addressing this. So with, without belaboring that point anymore, uh, there's a lot of people at home and online right now who are interested in, in getting to the, the core of today's discussion, and that's really around the, uh, the use of voice in the car. So I'll bring uh, back up the presentation, and we will start with this idea that it's the in-car voice, uh, voice assistant consumer adoption is our focus for sure. And for those of you who aren't familiar, we conducted a national survey of over a thousand US adults. Uh, it, it was online, we do adjust for total population. There's some things that we do to make sure that it's representative. Uh, we had several of those questions were repeated from the previous year, so we have some comparison. And uh, you know we really appreciated Sirens was a sponsor. That's one of the reasons why we're able to bring the actual report to you for free, even though there's a lot of effort put into it behind it. So I just want to start out with what I consider the top line takeaway from the information that we found, and that voice assistant use in the car is really a very large market. What we find today is about 130 million people have tried or at least used on some basis, voice assistance while driving, and about 84 million are using it on a monthly active basis. And what that comes out to be is just over half of U.S. adults uh, that, that drive have tried a voice assistant in the car. And so, so Sanjay, you know, obvious for you, this is what you do as, as a company. What was your reaction when you saw this? Um, I think uh, this... Uh... Uh, you know, makes sense. And um, I see this adoption even kind of, you know, growing further uh, because, you know, it's nice to have a smart speaker at home or, you know, have voice on my phone, um, et cetera. But one, one time that I really need and want to use voice is when I'm driving, when my hands are supposed to be on the steering wheel and eyes are supposed, supposed to be on the road. So voice becomes the natural kind of, you know, interaction mechanism. So, um, you know, I see this uh, further growing as as we move, uh, you know, forward. Um, you know, inside Serence, you know, we have a 
very focused view on uh, how to drive the adoption further because many people don't know the capabilities of voice that exists in a car. So, so we're very focused on that as well. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And that sort of leads into one of the next uh, findings that we had, very closely related. And we looked at what the adoption rate was from total users, monthly active and daily active users, compared to 15 months earlier. So September 2018, we'd run a very similar protocol among U.S. adults. And over 15 months, we saw a rise of about 15 million total users, people who tried voice in the car. And the monthly active users, those are the ones who tried it, but then made it a habit, you know, that, that went up another 6 million. So we, we see this thing where about a 13% rise of total people have tried it. We have something like a 10%, just under a uh, percent rise in people who are making it a habit. Uh, does, is this consistent with what you're seeing? Because you see what people are doing, maybe not like specifically the person, but you see the overall volume of what's happening. Yes. Um, so we um, uh, recently reviewed um, kind of you know our adoption with our uh, with our board um, last month, in fact. And uh, because this, you know, uh, monitoring the adoption KPIs is a board level item at Cerens, um for obvious reasons. Um, and um, we uh, we do expect. So these numbers are, you know, as a percentage are, are consistent, right? Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, we are obviously looking at the, the sedence domain, right? Uh, and, and sedence users. Uh, we we are, uh, uh, are uh, uh, the trend that we are seeing, uh, so we're, we're tracking this on a, uh, on a daily monthly basis, you know, with, you know very active. Um, so I get dashboard reviews from my team, um, uh, like I said, on a on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? And what we are seeing is uh, the daily active user um, uh, inch up, right, and uh, and bridge the gap towards kind of you know you know what right now is almost you know 50 million plus of monthly active users. And uh, the second thing that we are seeing is. The, we are also measuring the number of transactions that each of these daily active users are doing. And we're seeing the number of transactions also increase uh, through voice. So, um, you know, those are, those are kind of you know, a couple of extra observations that I want to add here. Yeah, so th 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 that's a great thing. I want to follow up on that. So your monthly active users moving up makes sense. Um, so... What percentage of this growth do you think is driven by the availability of, of voice assistance in cars, the increased availability with, you know, as, as the older cars are cycling out, newer cars with these capabilities are becoming more commonplace? And what percent do you think of this as people who've had access to this before, but are, um, but are now um, uh, you know, starting to use voice more frequently? Um, I think um, the um, uh, again I don't have uh, you know uh, very firm data on this, so this is more uh, kind of you know you know based on uh, the the interactions that we are having uh, right. with some of our customers, etc. That the increase in adoption is because of availability of the technology, right? Uh, as as the core reason for increase. Um, we think that there is, so we have very uh, uh, focused marketing programs now that Sedens is working with all the OEM customers of ours to drive uh, uh, education and onboarding of voice in the car. Um, uh, you know, I'll give you my own use case uh, before I uh, became Sedens CEO, uh, you know, uh, I drive a BMW and, and so does my daughter. Uh, both the cars, you know, are I think uh, 2016 or 2017 model, something like that. And uh, both both of them had, you know, Sedens platform. And the only uh, voice 
uh, uh, capability that I used to use in my BMW before I became Seren's CEO was the one that I learned from my daughter and, uh, and that's it, right? And, and so as an owner of a new car that has all this great you know, tech inside it, you know, we as an industry don't do a great job to kind of you know, educate our users about that technology. And, and so, um, you know, that's a huge focus for us to kind of, you know, drive adoption. And I think uh, uh, you will see more and more um, uh, of that increasing as well. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's good to know. I, I think that this also brings up sort of a logical segue into the next, the next data point. As we talked about the big three up front, the phone, the car, and the smart speaker, and you know, I will say from my, my previous research and other research that we've done here, we see that people who use smart speakers actually use voice more in all platforms. It tends to be a, uh, it tends to be habit forming and introducing people to start to think about it more wherever they are. So they might not be using the manual controls in the car. They think about using voice more because they're using voice on these other surfaces. But I want to bring up a different point here in that there's a lot of talk about smart speakers. We do it at VoiceBot. There's a great deal of interest around this new platform in the home because that hasn't been there before. And it's a, it's a new device and people like to talk about what Amazon and Google are doing in particular. Uh, but I think a lot of people don't realize that there's actually quite a few more users in the car on a regular basis. And so in terms of your observation about how the market's developing and how people talk about it, and in either the news media or research or just daily conversation. How do you think about this data here where we show that, you know, there's 130 million people that have used voice in the car versus just 88 million on the smart speaker. In fact, the 84 million or monthly active users in the car are almost as large as the total number of, of users on the smart speaker. Yeah, this was um, uh, definitely kind of, you know, interesting as I was going through the study. I, I was thinking that, uh, uh, you know, just, just because uh, uh, there are, you know, uh, all these homes uh, uh, out there that, you know, this number for the speaker will be um, uh, higher. Having said that, you know, then I started thinking about kind of, you know, this, uh, uh, this data here, uh, and, uh, you know, what made sense to me was that, you know, if I look at my own home, although, you know, there are, uh, there is one home with a couple of smart speakers, but we have four cars because there are four drivers in the home. Right. right. And, and so suddenly kind of, you know, when you kind of uh, apply that logic, you know, you uh, clearly see that, you know, yes, in, in my home, I'm just using me as a use case here. Uh, as one consumer, consumer home, you know, we have, you know, a, uh, you know, Alexa upstairs and a uh, uh, Google assistant downstairs. And then we, you know, and uh, we have, you know, certain functions of the home that are, that are tied to those two devices, but then we have four cars and all four of them has, you know, voice capability. Plus all the four drivers have a cell phone. And so they enter the car with the cell phone, which, also has you know voice uh, assistant capability, so um, so these numbers you know you know for that reason kind of you know make sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I think that's really good for people to understand where these fall. Uh, we one of the things we often do as well as we use the technology adoption life cycle. This is a model that was built in the 1950s. Uh, around agricultural technology, but it actually works for all technology. And I like to array here for people to understand where we are in the adoption cycle. And what we usually do for this is we look at where we have monthly active use of different technologies. And so this is penetration. You think about that in terms of the total population. And what we see is voice use for the devices, all those things on the left, smartphones, cars, smart speakers, and smart watches. You can see the array of of the device use with voice. Uh, and I, I wanted to contrast that a little bit with voice search because voice search is used across devices. And so that's actually something which is pretty widely used on a regular basis by people, mostly on the phone, but certainly on smart speakers in the car as well. 
Uh, and so we, we get this sense about where we are with cars and the fact that we have a lot of drivers who are using voice in the car, but there's a lot more to come. Yeah, um, couldn't agree more. Yeah. Okay, and that goes back to that education piece too, probably that you were yeah. just talking about. That's right. All right, so what I wanna move on to next is say, okay, well, people are interacting in the car. You mentioned this just a moment ago. How many times are, or excuse me, what, uh, what type of voice service are they using when they're in the car? And for those of you who are maybe listening to this and, and can't see this slide, just break this out for you. In terms of the voice assistant used in the car by US adults, we've got just over 33% are using the embedded voice assistant that comes with the car. Just a little over 30% are using some Bluetooth connectivity to the phone. Uh, and so they're using their phone-based voice assistant, but they're just using the, usually the speaker system essentially for the, for the car in order to interact with that. And then we have Apple CarPlay, uh, that's uh, 20, almost 27%. And that's up a few points since last year. That's actually definitely been growing. Uh, and then really bringing up the rear, we have Android Auto at under 10%. And uh, Amazon Alexa really just at a, at a couple percent because there's not as many options for that in the car. It's newer. Uh, so just laying this out, you saw this, Sanjay. Yeah. How do you react to this use of voice in the car in terms of the different uh, services and the orientations? Right. So, um, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, the data made sense to me because, uh, firstly, in this is U.S. data, uh, yes. and um, you know, U.S. has you know much higher adoption of uh, iPhone, and hence CarPlay has a higher percentage uh, than. Uh, you know, Android Auto, right? So that uh, uh, that made sense to me. Um, I think if, uh, if this survey was done uh, worldwide, you'd see kind of, you know, similar numbers for, uh, uh, and, you know, Android Auto um, and CarPlay. Uh, the Bluetooth piece um, is uh, 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 also uh, a suboptimal use voice in the car because like you rightly said in that scenario 30 percent of the people are just using the speaker system of the car uh, the microphone is still uh, uh, on the on the on the phone and you know you see many times people holding their phone when they're driving and kind of you know speaking into it right right uh, pizza certain, phone <laughs> yeah pizza phone exactly <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, there's a clear opportunity there to, uh, you know, deliver a better experience uh, and more safer experience uh, to the consumers. Um, the, a third of uh, uh, the usage is using embedded voice. And the interesting thing that, you know, many people don't know is that the embedded voice has uh, the ability to integrate with almost 200 different sensors inside the car. So uh, the, the use case that we are talking about here is only kind of, you know, voice, uh, voice search uh, in the basic kind of, you know, you know, voice functions. But there is some very advanced use cases that you can enable once you have voice, but also, uh, you know, tightly coupled with, you know, hundreds of sensors which are there in the car including seat sensors, including kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, all the other you know, sensors which exist in the car, which is not possible to do either through Bluetooth or through Android Auto or CarPlay. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, I'll point out something else that occurred to me as, as we looked at this data, was that if we go through embedded, Bluetooth, CarPlay, Android Auto, and Alexa in that order, that's, that's the order that people use them in terms of frequency. It's also the order they were introduced to the market. Uh, mm -hmm. So we also see that type of activity coming up, which I think is, is really pretty interesting. The other thing, when we do this analysis, and we pointed this out last year in the first report, is that we really have this function of inside the car versus outside the car services and use cases. And one of the things that, you know, you mentioned that, the Bluetooth is suboptimal, it really can't do any inside the car services for you, zero. Uh, it's, it's not optimized for the driving experience, but 
it is a convenience for some people if they just need to maybe use Siri or Google Assistant to initiate a phone call. Uh, if they, in particular, if they don't have a, an embedded voice system, which I don't know what percentage of cars on the road have an embedded voice assistant. Do you have that figure? Uh, uh, what percentage of the car uh, yeah, of, has of cars? Assistant? Yeah, of the fleet. Uh, uh, about uh, you know because you look at we ship in one and two new car, and we. Uh, uh, for the embedded voice, we think we have about 90% market share. So I'll say about 60% of yeah. the cars. Yeah, got it. Okay, so so and, and so that's also an important piece of context. But but then I look at I look at sort of CarPlay, Android Auto, and Alexa. I mean, for the most part, they're focused on these outside the car activities. They're not really controlling the telematics or the other features within the car. Uh, so you know, ultimately they've got great utility in terms of the con continuity throughout the day that people might be using some of these services, but it's really your mobile app for the car as opposed to a device that's specific to the car. So that's one of the things I always try to point out to people that it is really, it's a different value proposition. No, it, it totally is. You know, I mean, I give a simple use case, you know, um, let's say I have to go from, uh, Palo Alto to San Francisco. So, you know, I asked my voice assistant to take me from Palo Alto to San Francisco. Uh, in Bluetooth scenario or Android Auto or CarPlay, the three groups uh, in, in Alexa that we talk about, since they're not integrated with the, with the car sensors, uh, these systems don't know uh, how, many adult, how many passengers are sitting in the car. Um, oh, right. Uh, a, we do, uh, right? You know, through uh, through the embedded voice system knows uh, how many passengers are there. So that use case you can implement uh, with, you know, whether to use the uh, HOV lane or not, uh, mm -hmm. because based on number of passengers, for example, right? So a proper route can be given uh, based on, uh, you know, where you want to go and uh, and how many passengers you have in the car. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fascinating. I, the other thing I, I think about, though, is I, I assume that at some point, these other players, maybe not Apple, because they haven't really you know, talked about ambitions along those lines, they're going to want to sort of take on those in-car features. Uh, but it seems to me that it's very different because they're cloud-based and they have to learn to work offline. Uh, they don't necessarily operate in all the countries that the automakers, the automakers sell cars into. Uh, so... It seems to me like we're looking at a hybrid world for some time to come. Um, yes, um, you know, um, you know, for the foreseeable future, um, I think you the hybrid architecture is the right architecture for the car. You know, I say this. You know, I live uh, in Silicon Valley, and uh, you know, I live forty five minutes from my office, Brett, and uh, um, you know, you would think that in the tech capital of the world. Uh, when I come or come to the office or go back home, I would have 100% data coverage, right? I drop calls every day, yeah. you know, when, when I'm coming to or commuting to and from work. And so even in the heart of Silicon Valley, um, you know, we don't have, you know, a full 100%, you know, uh, data coverage. So uh, hybrid is the right architecture. You know, so that, uh, you know, when you are, for example, down in, the, in a basement of a parking lot, you know, your, your voice is still working because the use cases will continue to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to a few other things. We just want to get to, before we get to questions, um, the first is just point out to people, and we don't need to spend a lot of time on this right now because we talked about this really briefly, but you know, essentially, if you want to figure out your monthly active users, you can look at this by adding up the monthly and, and the daily. That's going to be about 63, 64%. So it's almost two thirds of the people, once they try using a voice assistant in the car, become these regular users. And what they're doing in terms of use cases are, you know, this whole idea of uh, talk, go, and play. So they're making phone calls or sending messages uh, using voice. 
they're absolutely accessing navigation, a core use case while you're driving, obviously. And then they're looking for entertainment, whether it be streaming music, radio, podcasts, any of these other types of things. Um, in terms of the way this was arrayed and the difference between daily users and overall users, seem about right to you and the way you think about your product planning and use? Yeah, I think uh, this this mapped uh, very clearly to uh, you know what we call domains. Uh, so we support about you know 40, 50 different domains in our in our platform, and this this mapped uh, uh, very clearly to that. Got it. And for those of you who are just listening, you know what we what we find is that uh, for the overall use of people who have tried things. But far and away, the top is the phone calls at 73%, and then directions are next at about 50%. So the people who've tried it, those are the things that they do the most. And, and music's actually quite a bit lower. I think people are still using the uh, inboard controls um, uh, much more frequently than they are uh, voice right now. But that, you know, that eventually may change. I think um, uh, just, just uh, yeah. well, two more, a uh, couple of quick comments sure. on that slide, right? One is that... Uh, you know, we're seeing kind of, you know, in-car commerce is another, you know, key growth area that, that there's a lot, lot of interest uh, uh, from OEM and, and customers where, you know, the use case would be you drive your car to pump number 15 and you say, you know, hey, Mercedes, you know, pay $50 on 15 and that's it, you know, and you just walk out and, uh, you know, pump the gas and walk away, right? So using voice platforms using voice biometrics to authenticate your you and 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 use you know the, the attaching the voice platform to the other ecosystems to kind of you know uh, uh, create these use cases as one key growth area you know so so basically uh, fuel uh, drive through parking tolls you know are kind right. of you know, big uh, commerce use cases for the car and uh, um, you know, um, we did receive a strange request this last week where uh, somebody asked us to see if we can detect uh, coronavirus through cough, detecting oh, right. cough patterns in the car. Uh, you know, so uh, obviously uh, uh, we're not working on that, um, but uh, uh, but I thought I'll, I'll mention that. Uh, yeah. As a as a request, you know, given what what the industry is going through, uh, we were asked that uh, can you, uh, you know, since we are pretty advanced in in our voice detection and cloning and all that stuff, we can detect you know emotions through when you're speaking to the system. We we can tell you whether you are happy or sad or you know what what sort of emotional state you are in by listening to your voice. So that was the theme, the, the reason behind uh, the yeah. request that we received. There are a couple of companies right now that are working specifically on that coronavirus through the, the voice and the cough. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. But, but I think you point out the commerce too. And the one thing that on this slide in particular, that's the biggest difference between daily active users and overall users is the placing a food order or beverage order for pickup. And the daily active users are doing that at about 10% of, yeah. of them are, are doing that. About 4% of people overall are doing that. So it's, it's definitely something that's coming. Um, and I did want to jump into just a couple other things before we get to questions. Uh, one, I'll just mention briefly so people are aware of it. Uh, we always ask people just for sentiment, like, are they thinking about using voice assistants more or less in the future. And about 44% say, hey, they're gonna use them the same as they have in the past. But 47% say they're gonna be using them more while driving. And 5.8%, uh, so 6% say they're gonna use them less. So it's like overwhelmingly that people are either gonna use them the same or more. And uh, a plurality are gonna actually plan to use them more. And that, that seems consistent with the other data that we have. Um, yeah. But I wanted to spend just a little bit more time on um, on that with you and ask your ask you if you had any comments or questions about that. Uh, uh, we're uh, as I told you, we're monitoring our um, usage on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and we see if you look at that curve, Brett, uh, you will see an exponential increase um, 
in that curve, right? So that uh, that uh, totally supports that uh, people are um, you know using more and they want to use more voice uh, you know in the car. So it's not just that we saw the data earlier that there's more monthly active users and, and there's also more daily active users that that also went up quite a bit over the last 15 months. But you're also seeing that the frequency of use within those periods is higher. That is correct. That's okay. correct. Which, uh, which as you plot it on time, that is that other 47% that's using uh, more you know, voice in the car. Yeah, so those super users, there's more and more super users, I would guess. Um, you know, the I don't have the breakdown of, uh, you know, is the, uh, you know, transaction in, in volume increase is being driven by super users only. Uh, we don't think so. It's, it's, it's the um, more usage of voice in that, that uh, the 47% category, right? which is people who want to use more voice in the car in the uh, you know in the future yeah. so assuming the same group existed a few months back you will see an increase in in, uh, in the transactions got it okay so next question that a lot of automakers are definitely focused on is what drives purchase decision uh, obviously a very important factor for them at any given time and about 37% of consumers say they do not think about voice assistance at all. So just over a third say it's really not a factor when they're purchasing a new car. But that means that over 60% are thinking about it in some way. And then there's these different type of gradations where you know, about a third say it's a minor consideration. And as much as 20% say it's really very important to them about what vo that there is a voice assistant present and it's a specific one that has specific capabilities. Uh, in terms of your work with automakers, is this something that they're starting to talk to you more about in terms of not just this as a value added feature, but something that's actually driving the decision about one model over another? Uh, yes, ab absolutely, uh, 100%. Uh, a few years back, uh, the decision of you know voice assistant uh, was pushed down to a tier one uh, in the in the automotive food chain, not to the OEMs. Uh, today, uh, every single OEM takes the decision about you know voice architecture themselves. Uh, yes, the implementation of that may happen through through the tier one, but uh, but the core decision about kind of you know what uh, uh, voice assistant, the architecture, the uh, um, the features and so on and so forth is taken by the by the by the OEM, and the other piece that we are basically seeing is, you know, a push down of uh, voice into all models, right? You know, today, right, uh, voice is as a feature embedded voice is is a, is a feature of mid to high end of the cars. Uh, in fact, you know, as we started, I uh, requested uh, to you that you know. Um, we finish uh, this on the hour because you know I have a, a very important meeting with one of the largest OEMs where you know the discussion is about broadening the voice into um, into all uh, kind of you know uh, segments of the car. Got it. Got it. Okay. Good. So that validates that they're thinking about it as well as the consumers. And then just our our final point here is that. Uh, and there's just so the people who are listening or watching know, uh, this is maybe not even a third of the number of charts and data points that we have in the in the report. So you should look at that. But one of the last points we wanted to talk about this idea of multiple assistants. So we looked at that at that uh, slide a couple of minutes ago where we sh we showed there's Bluetooth, CarPlay, there's the embedded voice assistant, and we started talking about this idea of multiple voice assistants in the car. And there are some customers who are actually, or some consumers who are actually really thinking about this right now. 15% say they're much more likely to be interested in a car that enables them to use more than one voice assistant at a time. And so how do you think about that? Um, uh, you know, I think uh, this number will increase. Um, and uh, the, uh, the reason for the increase would be A, the voice adoption, but also uh, you know, as the homes become more smart homes and, 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 and so on, uh, you know, you would want, you know, the, uh, 
the car assistants to be working seamlessly with the the home assistants right and uh, and you know what 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 we have uh, learned is that uh, the uh, consumers want uh, car you know to be an extension of their normal digital life uh, whatever their normal digital life is if you look at the digital life of a consumer here in US um, you know it include it includes the usage of you know apple devices and services um, uh, amazon every day google um, search and um, you know navigation and other products every day microsoft calendar outlook etc so it's all of them and they want the car to be kind of you know seamless uh, uh, experience so if i sit in my mercedes and say hey mercedes i'm 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 cold, um, you know. I want Mercedes to, you know, increase the temperature of my car, but I also want Mercedes to ask me if uh, I want to, you know, switch the heating on in my home, and and to do that, it should, you know, it needs to kind of you know bridge to uh, Google Home or you know Amazon Alexa or you know some other right. device. So that's the kind of architecture that uh, we see uh, all this getting uh, getting towards. Well, the purists out there really want to have a single voice assistant to rule them all, um, and they, you know, they really have been focused on that as a as an organizing principle uh, for this space. And you know, I've been skeptical of that right along because I think the world is big that digital services are really broad uh, and it's gonna be hard for any one assistant to, to be excellent at all the different use cases that we need. Right. So well, I really think that this idea, we're gonna be living in a multi-assistant world and we're gonna want that access wherever we are. And, and Brett, uh, it becomes even more complicated if you uh, take a global view. You know, if I'm a consumer uh, in uh, China, you know, I want, you know, Baidu, Tencent, you know, uh, or Alibaba assistant, you know, which are the ones which are, you know, existing on my phone or in my home. Right. If I'm a consumer sitting in Russia, I want, you know, Yandex assistant, uh, not Google or uh, Amazon because, you know, Yandex is the uh, major one there. So, you know, this this multi-assistant uh, environment becomes even more bigger when you look at, look at it globally. Yeah, so as an automaker, even if, even if I say, let's say Apple is in every country, and so let's say I could support Siri in all the countries that I wanted, as most of the languages covered that would be necessary, it, it's not necessarily the preferred solution for a lot of the things that people are doing in, those, in all those countries. That is correct. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Okay, Ava, do you have some questions for us? I sure do. Um, we have a lot happening. <laughs> okay, I understand. Uh, I can see the number. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll go with the first question because it's for, um, particularly for Sanjay. What educational efforts across OEMs directly to consumers to teach capabilities and use are being envisioned by Sarens? So, uh, great question. So we're, you know, our marketing teams, we're taking two approaches to it. One is a marketing approach and the second one is a technology approach. On the marketing side, our teams are engaged with the OEMs uh, to uh, use uh, sales and marketing as a channel to educate, um, you know, a new car buyer, uh, existing users, you know, through emails and other, you know, mechanisms to tell them about voice and what's uh, present in their car. On the technology side, you know, what we are doing is basically, um, uh, you know, making, um, using our platform to tell the consumer what they can do, kind of, you know, onboarding um, uh, uh, mechanisms, help mechanisms, et cetera, to, uh, to drive the adoption. Great. What's next, Ava? Uh, we have a question that someone actually emailed in. Um, he said, I would be very interested to hear from Saren if they included any methodology to evaluate the different voice assistants with regard to safe usage inside the vehicle when you developed your cognitive arbitrator. 
Do you see a substantial difference in the effects they have on drivers based on the different architecture, the way tasks are built, by who, and the way the voice assistant interacts, e.g. how much they talk? Um, no, we, we have not. Um, we have, uh, Serence has not done that. I don't know, Brett, if, if you know of uh, any studies, but I came across one that was done in UK very right. recently. Um, I'm forgetting uh, the exact details, but uh, if um, uh, offline, uh, Eva, you can send me the details. I can uh, dig that study out. And, uh, and this was done by, uh, by one of the U.S. Uh, government organizations. Yes. And uh, the conclusion was quite, uh, quite dramatic of, of that study, which is, uh, uh, you know, they were strongly recommending not using um, you know, touch and uh, knobs and all that stuff because the distraction that that causes is higher than, um, um, you know, being drunk or being on drugs. That that was the conclusion of that safety study. Yeah, there there are a number of these studies that come out. It's, I, it seems to me that I see one about every eighteen months. Uh, Trans, Transportation Safety Administration have done it. A couple of universities have done them, uh, and. Uh, you know, I think it's always the question of distracted driving, no matter what the distraction is, can be difficult uh, uh, and, you know, leads to risk. And so, you know, what's more dangerous? Is it more dangerous to have, be on the phone, to text, to be eating, uh, to be uh, doing personal grooming while you're driving? I mean, there's all these different types of things. Rarely do I see those all arrayed together. That's what I'd really like to see. I would like to see the different habits of people that we see, the people driving next to us every day doing while they're in the car, and then compare that against different modes of interaction, whether it be touch, whether it be um, uh, voice or some other method that they might do. But I think that that's, uh, that's really interesting. And actually, it makes me think of one other thing to ask you, Sanjay. The, you know, there's this concept that in the car you would only use voice. Some people are really purists about that as well. But one of the things that I've learned talking to people in the automotive industry is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of times when you might just want to activate a button. Mm -hmm. uh, the consumers, have, you know, they've seen that in the user experience studies that and you might, even if you talk, um, you might sometimes want to activate it manually as opposed to using a wake word or or just even talking. And so I, I know you've got some thoughts on that. Yes. Um, yeah, by the way, I do agree with that because, you know, we have conducted some studies there um, and, and, and multimodality, multiple interaction mechanisms is what we as humans get, you know, most comfortable with, right? So, uh, you know, there is that, that muscle memory concept, you know, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, stays with you uh, and, and buttons are uh, you know, part of that muscle memory of, of a human. Um, and also, you know, we have looked at um, you know, when you have to say certain things uh, uh, using uh, voice as a platform, you know, what happens to your cognitive load, right? You know, because if your cognitive load, if you have to think too much before you say something, then, and then you know, obviously your cognitive load is, uh, is, is rising and what that basically means is, you know, you are getting distracted at that point, basically. So, uh, hence, kind of, you know, having a, uh, a you know, a great NLU is very important, uh, uh, you know, as part of the technology stack. And, um, you know, to the earlier, you know, question, you know, we have compared um, uh, the core building blocks of our, us versus you know, uh, uh, the other kind of, you know, uh, uh, speech platforms which are available and we constantly keep kind of, you know, doing that from a competitive standpoint. But, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, that's, uh, that's, that's my point of view. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. All right, Ava, we, I think we have time for just one more question. Okay, um, a few questions have been surrounding the topic of voice commerce in the car, particularly what are, do you have any examples of a best use case and where do you see it going in the future? Sure. Uh, Brett, do you want to take a crack? At yeah, that? sure. I mean, ordering your coffee or your Chick-fil-A or whatever it is, 
so that it's ready when you show up it is to me obvious. I think a lot of people right now are thinking about grocery delivery, uh, but you don't, not everybody has grocery delivery, but you know, not having to go into the store and then placing a quick order for grocery or pharmacy when they do curbside, uh, cur curbside delivery. These to me are very obvious uh, movie theater tickets, you know, on your way there. How many of us have ever been to a movie theater? We didn't, we forgot to order online. We get there and then like, there's no good seats left or whatever. So these are all things that are essentially this combination of location and commerce really, really useful as well as also finding things. So this idea of, oh, I need this thing, asking your assistant where you might be able to find that. And then it actually directs you to the closest place that has that in stock at the price point you want. All those things are absolutely happening uh, in, in very small and very early uh, implementations today, but I think they're gonna be just commonplace in the next five years. Right, and I'll only add to that, Brett, uh, is basically fuel, which is uh, yes. fuel and charging and parking, right? The two things you have to do when you are in a car. So if you're an electric car, you want to charge, um, uh, you may want to charge or you may want to refuel uh, uh, and, um, and, and parking. So these two are another very strong use cases for commerce. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our time here. Uh, Sanjay, why don't you tell the, the viewers, listeners here, uh, how they can learn more about Serence, how to track what you're doing uh, uh, out there in, in really bringing and actually uh, I, I would say optimizing because you've already brought voice to the car. You did that decades ago, but you know, how, how can people keep track of what's going on with Serence? Yeah. So we're, you know, as um, uh, I said, we're, we're a public company. So, uh, you know, through our website, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, register and, and uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep informing you about kind of, you know, new, you know, products, new initiatives that, uh, that we do. So that's, you know, uh, www settings.com um you know i am also you know fairly active you know through my linkedin uh, uh, and other social media channels so uh, uh we have not uh, enabled uh, twitter yet as a new company we're going one channel at a time right. so that you know our marketing team can kind of you know you know uh, uh, and so we'll be we'll be active there as well and and so those are uh, you know a few ways of of interacting or you know send me uh, a direct note, and uh, you know that's my first name dot last name Sanjay dot Dhawan at Serens dot com. Thank you so much for your time today, everybody out there watching and listening. I uh, just want to let you know, voicebot.ai forward slash research. You can download this full report. There's a lot of really in-depth information there. Plus, we have other reports, as many of you know. Uh, thanks again for uh, everybody here who took time out today to join us and learn a little bit more put your questions and put your questions in. I see that we have several dozen questions. Uh, you know, between Sanjay and I, we'll look at those and see if we can answer some on Twitter. Also, I'll try to tack some on to the end of uh, the podcast version of this, which will go out uh, uh, sometime next week. So thank you again, everybody. And thank you very much, Sanjay Dewan, CEO of Serence, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Brett. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.